dude, I've been sleeping like gar like I'm I've been hot and cold garbage. on the sleeping. Like it's been um been falling asleep. I, I didn't take my melatonin last night. I was reading my book and dude, like I was reading my book and I, I was just trying to read one chapter. It was like ten pages, it probably at least, might have been a little bit more. But I was like it was like eight thirty and I was like falling asleep reading the pages, reading the pages. I've been listening to a um and let's circle back to the sleeping conversation, but I'm excited about this. One audiobook I'd highly recommend you listening to and uh Jake that we had on the other week inspired Extreme Ownership by Jocko. Dude, incredible value. That that book is so well written because A, it's really it's really engaging because he'll he'll tell these war stories and he has each chapter is broken up by principles. So like extreme accountability, patience, uh ex plan and execute, keep it simple. Um the one I listened to today was uh, decentralized command. So being able to divvy up command, giving people the power to make decisions. Um, so you're not kind of trying to manage everything happening at once, but he'll tell like a war story of how these principles came into either a success story, saving troops, getting the mission done, whatever it is. Then he'll tell the principle, like, here's what you should have taken from the story. And then they give an example because they have this thing called upper, upper echelon, which is uh, their like company and they get paid to go in and sit with upper management and CEOs and senior leadership. And like they look at kind of inefficiencies and, and apply these. I mean, at the end of the day, it's extreme ownership of remove your ego, things like that. But they'll, they'll look at how the business is operating and the people within it and look at what, what the issue is and why it's not achieving your goals. And it's always a personnel issue. Like people will, put out these extensive sales and marketing plans and they'll be like, Oh, well, the employees just don't get it. Or, uh, I've tried to explain it. It's a bad market. Uh, the marketing team doesn't get it. Yada, yada, yada. But it's like, it's literally, it always comes down to like an ego, extreme ownership, keeping it simple. Highly, highly recommend to add that to your read list. I'm going to read it next. I'm listening to it right now. I'm, I, on my ride yesterday, I listened to a bunch of it. But I've got sounds like a good ebook. Ton, dude, ton of value out of it. Ton of it. I mean, it's facts though. Every there's so many people who lack ownership anymore. Dude, it's, people just want to point fingers. It's the easiest thing to do, and it's just by default. It's not within human nature to own up to things that you're doing, mistakes you may be making, or just excuses in general. And it's just so apparent in today's society. I don't know if it's just not. Like being taught, I don't know, but people lack ownership, and it's kind of it's leading us astray. I would say. Yeah, they lack extreme accountability. Is like the biggest thing. I I used to not be very accountable for my actions. I was unaware, yeah. but, but like kind yeah. of what we were talking about the other day of uh things not going to plan and kind of you having to you have to go. You gotta you gotta fall on your face. I think a, a couple times, and I think. We are only 24, and there's a lot to learn going ahead. But I think the messages we have can apply to, like, I I, I look back at my 17-year-old self and really wish that I knew the things I knew now, and I'll say that when I'm 30 and when I'm 35 and when I'm 40. You know, this is probably be a, a, a repeating cycle, but I'm absolutely obsessed with self-development and growth because I've just learned so much, and you can just save so much time and inefficiencies and mistakes. And it's never going to be a perfect process, but like the, the example of things not going as planned. And I always thought it was like, I was doing like, how does this happen? I was, I did X, Y, Z, right. I thought I was doing the right thing. External factors come in and I kind of took a passive victim approach of like, Oh, that wasn't my fault. Like, guess what can I do? I'm going to wait this out, write it out, but you got to take extreme ownership of your actions, your accountability and because if you don't you just sit there and you show up every day and you don't nothing's ever going to happen if you just sit around and have this victim mentality and don't take ownership for maybe the things that are maybe come at you that are just bad bad cards that have been dealt but you can always take action to do something you can always pivot and do something i mean i think it goes back to that accountability conversation like I think the difference between us now being 24 versus being 20, 21, even 21 years old, like 
it's that self accountability. I think we have a better understanding that if something doesn't work out or something doesn't go our way, I feel like we view it now as an experience, something to make us better, not as, you know, oh, the world didn't work out this way because it was someone else's fault. No, I think we take accountability for our actions, A, and B, I don't really mind when failures come up or adversities come up because it's all learning at this point. Mm -hmm. And I think if you can shift your mind to see those experiences, like this is a challenge and I'm going to learn from it. And I'm going to become better out of it. Like that's how you actually like level up as a human being. Yeah, It's not viewing these things and blaming someone or deferring it. Like see the failure, see the challenge, see the adversity and make yourself better out of it. Like, there's these little things in life that we have to go through in order for us to take the next step, become better at communicating, become better at leading, whatever it may be, you have to take accountability of whatever's going on and use it to your advantage. I think that's how people need to view it instead of just being like, oh, that sucks. There's nothing I can do about it. Of course, there's something you can do about it. Make something happen out of it. Yeah, and the in those failures and, and those things that happen to you, they're not proof that you suck. You just stepped out of your comfort zone and you're not ever gonna ace something the first time you try it. That's like the beautiful part. But you gotta you gotta get comfortable being uncomfortable trying new things. But you you learn so much about yourself and I think a lot of people, myself included, I'll try to super hyper calculate all these potential possibilities and make an in depth plan before I try something new or take action on something rather than just starting like you just got to start you got to take the first step and you will figure it out and you're gonna maybe fail and it might not be the most efficient way but there's always a valuable there's always a value to take away from trying something new even if you have no idea how this is going to correlate to your overall goal or how this is going to someday benefit you in the end and holy smokes man again i'm only 24 but the amount of things that i've learned from just doing things that I never would have expected would have directly valued my goals that I have to accomplish this year or the next is, is it's, I can't even count them anymore. And now when things come up, I'm super hesitant to ever say no, because I'm like, I don't directly see how this could value me right now, or even how can this contribute to my career? How can this contribute to muscle dummies? How can this contribute to my goals of being fit? losing weight, getting better at kickboxing, doing like how, how is this going to contribute? But I'm like, I've just, it's happened too many times where I'm like, dude, there is, there is a lesson in there somewhere. And you just got, you got to be willing to step out and try these new things. 100%. And I think another thing, just going back to self accountability in maturity really is just being so neutral with things, like not getting too high, not getting too low, yeah. like just taking things as they come and just kind of learning out of it. We're at the point of our lives where everything that we're doing is just a learning experiment. That's all we're doing is experimenting. And social media has definitely shown me that mm -hmm. the, you know, falling on your face and things not working out. But here's the thing, like with my social media, like it didn't just kick off and just start going. No. I took a lot of failures. We had to, we figured out a lot of things between all three of us. And sometimes it still does fail. Sometimes I feel like I got a great video to share to people and it's going to go viral and it doesn't do anything. And I just sit there and I'm like, okay, didn't work next video. And that's just how it's got to be. But I think too, the reason why we are so good at taking different adversities on is because we're just so consistent with everything else. So we can always fall back on our foundations. And that's something that allows us to kind of push out of our comfort zone and make these decisions and, and experiment a little bit because we always can fall back on what works. We know what works. We're, we're very scheduled people. So being able to have that foundation to always fall back on, worst case, it's like you'll, you'll never lose. You'll only learn. That's, mm -hmm. that's kind of the point. Yeah, I like this thing you said falling back because the things that we do day to day, they're oh, like I took a mindset like two years ago. Of, I don't really know what's going to happen. I don't know where I'm going. 
not going to make any major decisions, but I just started doing little daily habits that were I knew would be positive for me. And again, I didn't know exactly how those dividends were going to pay out, but it's only been like two years and the, the dividends that the, those daily actions have paid are like have been compounding extremely, and which excites the heck out of me for the next 10 years of having a positive mindset, trying to add value to everyone you have a conversation with, being as patient as possible, always just having a, a positive mindset. These are the foundations. I have them right on my desk. <laughs> Patience, positivity, well. discipline, and empathy. Add value to every person that you speak with. On my wall, you don't have to be the victim of your environment. You can also be the architect of it. So there's just little things that I try to do every single day and remind myself in, in any field or any endeavor that I'm chasing. And notice too, I like how you said you've been working on it for two years and you're just starting to see it. I think it's something that people have a hard time understanding because they lack that character of patience. They don't even understand what patience is. Patient isn't, being patient isn't doing something for two weeks and expecting results. Yep. Being patient is working on something for five years and understanding that throughout that time of being consistent and working on it, that's when you'll start to generate results and you'll start breaking these maybe old habits that you've had and start instilling new ones. But we're talking years, I'm not talking weeks, I'm not talking days. That's what real patience is when you're talking about self-development and growing into the best version of yourself. I think that's something that we all try to do here at Muscle Dummies every single day, be the best version of yourself. Because at the end of the day, every it's day, you right? versus you. It's you versus you every single day. There's not anyone who is going to dictate what you have going on or what you did yesterday. The only person who can make yourself better is you. So I think people need to understand and kind of emphasize that, that patience is looking years down the road, years of consistency. That's when you'll start doing it. And I mean, really for us, it's only been two years. And the amount of benefits that we've received after two years, it's really been incredible. I mean, it's absolutely been incredible. I think our health has just changed for the better. Say, yeah, only probably in a year and a half, I would say. Not even our a full focus, tooth. Our mentality, our ability to kind of go get up and do whatever. What like. If I if I wanted to wake up tomorrow morning and run five miles, I could. Yep. Because my mentality is I can do anything. And I'm not saying that in a cocky way. It's just this confidence that I built with myself and my ability to acknowledge that the work that I've put in every single day would pay off. If I if I should I wake up and run in the morning? Sure. Maybe I will. Just because I feel like I can. I can do these things because I've worked on it. I've stayed consistent with it. We've been making sure our health has been in shape, but making sure our mind has been just going and focus. I feel really focused with the team, and it, it's it's. Yeah, I think two off. two things off that. I think the that how you develop that mindset has come from having these small utter victories, and you have developed an identity of like you do the things you say you're going to do, and you built that confidence from setting goals that are hard and getting up and taking action on them every day. And once you start to achieve those small little goals, you can see that result and you say, like, you, you have more confidence to go in and say, I am going to just do these things because that's what I do. And I think a lot of people, they give up on the two-week mark and you set these little goals. Maybe you want to lose 20 pounds. You, you get injured, you get tired, you get demotivated for a day or two, then you kind of slog and, and all of a sudden it's over. And after a couple of those, you lose motivation and you're like, I can't do I can't do these things that I set my mind to. And the, and the ball rolls downhill versus uphill. And it is all momentum, I think. But you got to just do these hard things and stick with them. But I think the other part of it, off what you said about the focus with the team, is I don't feel overly confident and ambitious every single day there's days where i and i if there's few and far between now they still happen every so often but the, especially like getting into a healthier more disciplined lifestyle there was days where it's like like i don't want to do this this is uncomfortable this is hard 
I'm tired. I'm unmotivated. Maybe uh, something didn't go well that day or the previous three days that I expected to go better. And it's like, why am I doing this? And you get demotivated. But that's that's why you do need to surround yourself with with people that you know are getting up and getting after and doing these things every day because it's like, wow, I can't let them down either. I, I guess I just got to – some days it's going through the motions, man. Like you've had those days, those lifts, those extra, like those study sessions where it's like I'm just kind of going through the motions here. This isn't anything too robust, but at least, at least I'm here and I'm showing up and there is some resilience to that because when you do get through that and you're done and you finish it and you accomplish it, it's like – well, if I can show up when I feel like that, I guess I can show up any day. And then that confidence just starts to roll. So I think you need to you need to build on those habits. You need to build on those daily little goals that you that you achieve, which is why I think writing stuff down is super important. So you can check those boxes at the end of the day, or you can write down if you keep a little journal the things you want to accomplish over a two to three to six month period, and you can look back and say, "Wow, here's where I was back in." March and here's where I am today. You don't maybe you see yourself every day, so you see you'll feel probably feel like this static figure, but when you write those things down, you can come back and go, Wow, I have come a long way. And I, I, I personally do that myself. I've keeping logs of especially the days that aren't great. I keep logs of I keep a one to ten scale of how I'm feeling and the things that are stressing me out that day to day and why are those things stressing me out as a mindset? Is there something I can control? Is there something I can de-shed? But then what's super powerful is six, eight months down the road as you go back and you read those, then you see those things that were you were trying to achieve or that were stressing you out. And now all of a sudden, it's eight months later and you're like, holy smokes, man, those, those things I did every day, I did those. And that builds up on that confidence and again, develops that identity of like, I am that person that gets those things done no matter what. Yeah. I mean, it, it just goes back to that accountability. This episode is all about accountability. It's self accountability and it's holding those around you accountable. And, you know, going back to you talking about those lifts that just aren't good. Maybe the crappy night's sleep. Maybe, maybe it couldn't eat. Maybe it was a busy day. Maybe studying just a drag, but you have to do it. And, I think the thing that we're really good at, A, I want to preface this, that we have a great team and I hold myself accountable because Jake's holding himself accountable. And if he's holding himself accountable, I have to hold myself accountable. And that's that's the importance of having people around you um, just pushing you to reach your goals, whether that's your partner, whether it's a friend, whether it's family member, it doesn't matter. But it's important that you have those people who want to see you do well you know, or supporting you throughout it. However, at the same time, it's like, I really don't give myself an excuse. If I know I have to study, if I know I have to work out, it doesn't matter. You have to separate yourself from your feelings sometimes. And yeah, like there's days that I don't want to do it all the time. Like there, I feel like there are more days than not. I mean, I'll always go hit the gym. How many of those days are ex like, absolutely great lifts and i have a bunch of energy and i'm just ready to go no i don't want to wake up at 4 30 in the morning go to the gym then go to school for six hours and come home and study for six hours that's hell <laughs> like it's it sucks but it's detaching your feelings from what you got to get done mm -hmm. and i there, there's a there's a fine line to it but going back to um the goals you were talking about i've been having a lot of people reach out to me and People, you need to reset your goals. I think that's something that's super important because mm. I, have, I have people reach out to me saying, oh, I want to lose 70 pounds. Okay, let's take a step back here and let's say, let's, let's rephrase your goals. I want to lose 70 pounds. Okay, how about, and this is the thing too, you need to rephrase them and be more specific. So I want to lose 70 pounds. Okay, that's your that's the main goal. That is the that's the mountain you have to climb, 70 pounds. We need to break that down and we need to get that specific. So let's aim for 10 pounds in one month. Let's add that time duration to it so we can measure it and hold ourselves accountable to it. See, that's where I think a lot of people go wrong. 
and I asked people, what are your New Year's resolutions? And they gave me such vague, generalized goals. And I'm thinking to myself, you're never going to reach them because they're not specific enough. You're not being specific enough with yourself. How much? How much time is this going to take? What? Put a number on it. You can't just say, oh, I want to make $100,000 this year. Well, what's, what's the plan there? What do you have? What's the plan? How are you going to make $100,000? How much time is it going to take you to make $100,000? What are you currently doing that's adding to that as we go along? So I think that's something that people really need to sit back and relook upon is are you being specific enough with your goals? Because if you're not being specific, it's really hard to track them and it's really hard to stay consistent and actually achieve them. And I, th yeah, I, that's why I think you need to write them down so you can, you can see, I want to lose 70 pounds, but then you can make a plan to lose 10 pounds, however, however long it's going to take. But I think the, it goes back to the biggest issue is patience, dude. It's just a patience thing. But I think that patience thing stems from if for the example of, which is a common one, new year's resolutions is wanting to lose more weight. That's like a big one that everyone always wants to do. I think the issue is too many people look around at what other people are doing and seeing other people drop maybe 25 pounds in a month or that have already reached their weight loss goal and they feel like they need to expedite and get there as well. And you got to you got to get rid of that. You have to get rid of that. You have to focus on your weight loss goals or your New Year's resolutions and yours only. And tell the people around you that support and have like goals like yours. If you're listening to other people's opinions that have lower expectations than you have for yourself, they're going to give you every single reason to take those days off or to not do the things that are going to level you towards your goals. But not looking around and seeing what other people think or what other people are doing, it's hard, man. And like, I still do it sometimes. I do it way less now. I, I really am pretty comfortable with myself and don't really care. And I'm, I minimize my social media intake. Whatever you have to do, you have to just develop that self-confidence. But patience is what it's all about. And I think there's a couple techniques to be more patient. But having that plan, not looking at what other people are doing, focusing on your journey, not Johnny's journey, not my journey, your journey weight loss journey because self accountability and, and maybe we did a bad and maybe that was and i do wish i would have documented early last year of my life a little bit more but i didn't as much and i'll i'll be vulnerable here for a second because i felt like garbage it, i didn't feel confident i was struggling I, we were waking i was waking up early I did not feel very motivated. I was beating the hell out of myself, and I didn't really want other people to see me in that state. You saw me in that state. My family didn't really see me in that state, but it was a vulnerable, miserable time, but I was doing the things that I had to do, and I didn't really have that confidence, and maybe I, I do wish I did because there are people that are probably going through the exact same thing of they're tired, beat down, unmotivated, not very confident, and trying to make the change, and the change is difficult. Oh, I need to say this the right way. Anything that's easy is not worth... Anything that's easy is not worth pursuing. Let that sink in for a second. Anything that's easy is not worth pursuing. So yes, things are difficult. I mean, you were training for an Ironman. You had never even ran a race in your life. Never. We were waking up at 4 a.m. every once. single day. <laughs> Dude, we were waking up at 4 a.m. every yeah. single day. We were lifting six days a week. We were running on six hours of sleep. We were starting a company. We were starting our social media. We had a lot of things going on. I think you just started your new job. Like you, there was a lot of things going on. It was really uncomfortable. Very uncomfortable. And during that time, during that time of you lacking that confidence, when you look back on it, you understand now that that was necessary. Oh, and I'm because grateful that it happened. Yeah, because you're sitting here now and you're like, wow, 
that was really hard. Super, yeah. It was super. I mean, there were there were days that we were both down horrendous. We had so much stuff going on, and it was hard. It was difficult, but we saw it through. We held each other accountable. We held ourselves accountable. We made it through. And I can tell you, I am very grateful for everything we had to go through. Mm -hmm. I'm grateful that I put myself through that much hell. And again, it's just going back to the maturity thing and, and really understanding that with all these difficulties, you can really level yourself up. And it doesn't mean that like, you know, you have to have some sort of tragedy in your life, but you can choose to do things that are difficult. You can choose them and it will help. It will help you in the long run. I know it's hard. I mean, here, here's an example, ready? It's 20 degrees up here in, in New York state. I think it was 15 degrees yesterday. And Louie has got this big ice tub outside. And this thing's filled up. I mean, I'm, I'm getting in there, but. So he, he gets in and he's like, Hey, listen, you gotta, you know, you gotta get your breathing right. I'm going to do this first. Uh, um, you know, I'm sure you're not going to be used to this because you have to literally like break the ice off the top of it. Yeah. Like, I love that. that cold. He's like, yeah, you gotta like, you gotta brace yourself. So I watch him get in and he's been doing it for a few days. I'm standing right next to him. It's 20 degrees. I'm in my shorts. I'm absolutely frozen and I'm looking at him and he's just doing his deep breathing. And I'm I'm just sitting there. I'm shivering. It's so cold outside. And Everything in your body's and, telling you, e, 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 get back inside. <laughs> so he he gets in. He gets down right to his neck. His head's sitting there, and he's just doing his breathing. And he sits in there for like a good good sixty seconds, and then he takes a deep breath. And he dunks his head under, and then he gets out. And then it was my turn to get in there. And I haven't been in a I haven't been in a cold tub in a in a little while. I used to in college, but this was an actual cold tub. I mean, this thing was frozen, frozen solid. And he's like, "You can't think about it. Don't give yourself an excuse. Get in, get that water up to your neck." I was like, "All right." Took my shoes off, got in, immediately sat down. That water ran up to my neck. And your lungs want to collapse. You, your body wants to fight that water more than anything. Your fight or flight is going. Your adrenaline's going. It feels horrible, horrible. That initial shock, it's not something worth doing. And you're sitting there and you're fighting to breathe. You're fighting to breathe. And then it starts getting a little bit easier. And you're starting to get your breathing down. And you're sitting there and then your body gets a little numb. And then that cold doesn't hurt as much. And then your breathing's under control. And then you're looking out. So we're we're looking out into the woods. You can see kind of the, the sun rising. And, and my breathing's under control and I'm feeling better. My body's numb. I take a deep breath. I dunk my head. I come up, stand up. And all of a sudden, it's not cold outside anymore. Because my body's so frigid from that water. And you just stand there and you're just like, you feel like you've climbed Mount Everest. You feel like you've accomplished something. You got so much adrenaline and dopamine running through you. Like you feel on top of the world, but your body initially, I was looking at that cold tub before I was in it. And I was like, there's no way in hell I'm getting in there. <laughs> Absolutely no way. But I'm telling you, it's, you can choose these difficulties whether it's just taking a cold shower, grabbing grabbing a cold tub, filling filling your bathtub up with some ice, getting I, out, hitting a walk in the morning, getting your diet right, we can choose our own difficulties, and if you stay consistent with them, that's how you really level up. The I love the cold plunge. How did I mean before I get into that? How was uh how. How was how'd you feel like alert wise and mental clarity wise the rest of the day? I mean the amount of dopamine. I mean Huberman talks about the amount of dopamine. Um, I think it's like I want to say it's like ten times the amount versus nicotine, and nicotine's very very increases your dopamine. That's why it's so addicting. Mm -hmm. But your focus, you're just sharp, just sharp, dude. It's crazy. I um 
it's a such a shock to your body. I I love the cold plunge for that that reason, especially I love it, but I love it more for the mental, the mental thing of like everything. It's no one's no one's forcing you to do it. It stinks. It's cold outside. You got to break the ice, then get in it. But man, that is so 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 such a good thing to get in there, conquer it, overcome that anxiety, and you feel like you're on top of the world. Like that's we talked about it last time too as well. Like getting up and doing that hard exercise in the morning because you don't want to get out of bed. You're warm, cozy. You don't want to get up an extra hour and a half early when you don't have to. But if you can just go through that that hard thing in the morning, the rest of the day, those battles are so much easier. Which is, I'm a not huge. to mention that. Go for it. Not to mention your energy's up, your concentration will be up, your immunity will be better. So just keep those in mind too. I'm I'm a huge proponent. I cannot wait to have a cold plunge when I when I move here in about a month. The uh, I, I I do I take cold showers every morning for that reason because there is not a morning that I want to turn that water to cold and sit in there for a minute or two. But you have to do it. You have to do it. And God. I feel so much better after it's done, but like this morning, because it was it was cold out. It was all right. It was cold in Florida. It was like forty five out this morning, and I was like, I I've been cold all day, all night. I do not want to get in a cold shower. That sounds horrible, but um, it's it's part of the identity. <laughs> you just got to do it, and I'm I'm jealous. You gotta do it. I want a cold plunge. Gotta do it so bad, Jake. Jake, I want to give three three tips. Hit it. I want to give three tips. I want to give three tips to lose ten pounds in one month. Ready? Yep. Number one. Emphasize protein with every meal that you eat, first and foremost, because protein is the most filling. So if you're starting your morning with a bagel and juice, some cream cheese, that's all carbs and sugar. Let's get them out. Get them out. It's all carbs and sugar. You're gonna feel more hungry later on because you lack protein and you're going to raise your sugar. It's not good for you. Protein every single meal, breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Now going into the meal specifically, I really think that eating three meals a day, breakfast, lunch, and dinner in a snack if you need it, that's how many meals you should be eating a day. You should not be eating all day long. However, getting into number two, you need to try your best You need to stop drinking sugary drinks, juices, sodas, Gatorades, whatever your poison. It's just adding hundreds of extra calories on your day. So I really push for water consumption. If you got to add a sweetener to your water that's zero calorie, so be it. Just get off the sodas and the sugary drinks because it's just adding weight on your body every single day question do you think off of the sugary jinx do you think there's something psychological to like that extreme like because it's an unnatural thing that you're consuming like we're pretty big on like whole food ingredients and not not all those artificial whatever but i think there's something mental to that because it's like a massive dopamine hit when you're taking in that soda and just all that sugar and all those flavors and then you want and you crave more of that the rest of the day Sugar is sugar is one of the most addicting chemicals to human beings. That's why people have such a hard time getting off soda and getting off juice. My mom and, kicked the soda, John. I mean, that's amazing. That's absolutely amazing. And I'm sure that she's feeling better, and I'm sure she's lost weight from it. I mean, I tell people all the time, like, okay, you drink two bottles of soda every day. Two bottles of soda, like 400 extra calories. If you just reduce that, probably in one week, you'd probably lose yeah four or five pounds. And just four or five pounds. Cut the 400 extra calories, replace that with water. The water will probably, zero calories will help you make, feel you more full. You'll probably even eat less as a result. I think it's, I think it's perfect. Third yeah, tip. Absolutely. Third thing. Maybe, maybe we'll do four things. Um, third thing, if you're not working out, I, I challenge you to walk four days a week for 15 minutes outside, inside, wherever that is, just walk 
It's only to move your body. That's all it is. This is if you do not work out whatsoever. And if you do work out, say you work out, you know, three days a week, add the walking in. It's something that's very, very soothing. It doesn't take a lot of energy. It's not hard on your body. But, and I know you walk a lot too, it's a great way to, to relax your mental, take a little step away from your work, increase your focus, work on your patience, maybe listen to a podcast. Talk a little about your walks and how you utilize them. Yeah, I like I started running a lot last year. I was really listening. I was listening to music, started listening to podcasts so I can consume more knowledge. I was just trying to double parlay and uh, be as productive as I possibly could. But what I started doing in the last month or two is I, I start, I'm trying to delay dopamine in the morning. So, for example, I won't look at my phone for at least 30 minutes in the morning. I will just try to get a little, I'll start to move a little bit in the morning. I'll do kind of a dynamic stretch, but I'll do it to silence. And it's almost kind of a little bit of a, it stinks every morning. It's not fun, but it's almost like a meditative state where you can, because I think a lot of people, they're under constant distraction. And whether that be, and I'm guilty of this as well, and I've been trying to work on it, like every down second that I have, I either have music in the background, a podcast listening, like there's not there's not really many seconds of the day where I'm not stimulated. But what I started, I started to realize maybe that's not the best thing because I was over consuming. So like tomorrow morning, for example, I'm going to go for a run first thing in the morning, probably 530. And I'm not going to bring my headphones or my phone or anything. It's going to sit there because it's a very good time to sit there and take inventory of how you're feeling, the things you want to accomplish that day, maybe how you slept last night. Why did you sleep like crap? Did you eat too late before you went to bed? Are you neglecting a conversation you should have with someone? Whatever it might be. Um, but I, I don't think a lot of people are taking inventory. So I, I've hyper, hyper focused getting those walks done early in the morning, trying to come up with the sun. because so I think that's very beneficial as well. But I, I also, I will sometimes listen to an ebook or a podcast, but I, I do just try to just be as present as I possibly can. Just take in kind of what's around me take mental inventory of how I'm feeling, the things I want to accomplish, the things that I've done the past week. Cause I, I really don't think a lot of people do that. It's definitely important to stay present. I mean, Jake was talking about it last week, but going off to um, you speaking about, you know, staying off your phone the first 30 minutes. I think that's something that a lot of people have trouble with. And I guess the reason behind staying off your phone when you first wake up is because say you're rolling out of bed, right? Yep. You're rolling out of bed, your alarm goes off, you're still tired. You, you're going to go to that phone to kind of wake you up, right? That mm -hmm. light's going to be in your eyes. Say you're on Instagram, you're scrolling through, and you see something that just, just ticks you off. That stimulus, that negative stimulus is going to set your whole attitude for the entire day. Yep. Whether or not you want to believe it, you are very vulnerable when you wake up in the stimulus that you take in as soon as you wake up is important, but that's why we're really big supporters of getting up when your alarm goes off, get away from the phone, maybe hit a little bit of a stretch, make sure to get some water in you yeah, that's, because you're dehydrated from the is night that before. Be tip that's number something four? That, that is something that everyone can do every single day. As soon as you wake up, if you forget your water, you can place it right next to your bed. Yep. Hold yourself a little, have a little self accountability and make a glass of water before you go to bed. Because as soon as you wake up, you should be drinking water. It's going to help with your immunity. It's going to help with your energy. It's going to help actually wake you up and get your body moving. It's going to get your joints moving because you're dehydrated from the night before. So make sure you drink water as soon as you wake up. Or someone like but, might consume, you get up and you see someone's already at the gym, already worked out or done something you haven't done. It might be just an incident proof of like, man, I suck. Like, I wish I could have done that. And it's, it's just such a negative way to start the day. So I'm I'm huge on it. I've been doing it for a while now. It's a pretty good habit I have. Also, not looking at the phone about an hour before bed. Sometimes that one's a little bit more difficult, but accountability and discipline, and it, it does help with sleep. It does help kind of shut the brain down, try to just develop better habits before I go to bed and when I wake up. Absolutely. And rolling into tip number four, and this is something that I uh... – I'm a big supporter of fasting, as yes. many of you know. I think I think fasting, not only for weight loss, just for health benefits overall, 
if you can try your best to hold off breakfast at least one hour after waking up and have your last meal within two, I would recommend three hours before you go to bed and starting to get into your fast. I think that's something that's super important. It's absolutely free to do. It's a supplement that you can use that really just takes discipline and self-accountability for you to do, for you to receive so many health benefits to help reduce your inflammation, to help build your insulin sensitivity, to help you lose weight. Now, that is something that a lot of people don't utilize, but I'm telling you, especially if you're going to bed right before you go to bed, if you're eating before you go to bed, you will gain weight. And research has shown and proven that people who eat later at night tend to gain weight. So it's something that a lot of you should consider. If you can try your best three hours before you go to bed, have your last meal and stick to water, you will receive more health benefits. You will reduce your inflammation and you will enhance your weight loss. Studies have proven it. Will you sleep better too? You will sleep better um, because your body won't be working so much on digesting that food. So you'll actually help. Um, obviously, your energy will be put into different places, but really during that time, during a fast, when you're fasting, you are in a repair state. When you're feeding, you are in a growth state. So if you can kind of give yourself a little bit of time between your last fed state and you going into a fasted state, you can help repair your body better, hence reduce your inflammation, and your sleep will improve as well. Um, I, I, I've been doing that as well. Huge proponent. Just takes all the thinking out of like dieting. It's just little minor hacks. Like I don't even think about dieting. I just eat relatively clean, and, and I've been pretty consistent with weight loss, keeping the fat off, building muscle consistently. Those four little tips that you just gave have helped me lose over 50 pounds over the last and probably a, a couple month period. I know they helped you lose 50 pounds. And I think those four tips are such easy, free things that you can do every day that will help you sustain weight loss and live a healthier lifestyle. I think sus consistency in being able to sustain something is going to be the biggest key to achieving those long-term goals you have. You just have to start building these habits and they're just little and it, and it takes time and it takes consistency, but all these tips that we're giving you, it's not like you got to go to a supplement store and buy these things or go online and buy these things. It's like they're free. It's we had, we have accessibility to a lot of stuff here. Like we're in the U S we have accessible water. Like we, we have a phone. We need to start thinking of things as like, we have the privilege to have these things and not just taking them for granted. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Water like, being away from your the biggest one. Water, yeah. safety, and security, being able to sleep. I mean, it's stuff that we don't even think about, but everyone should be very grateful to have these very basic things. I mean, the fact that we even have a phone to look at and to look up anything, I mean, should be very grateful. But going to your phone, I do think it's important. And it's something that I really try to teach all my young kids that I work with. And that's just learning something new every single day and pushing yourself, talking about doing something difficult. So that's, that's another thing that I, I think is a difficult thing, like pushing yourself to learn something new, whether that's reading an article, um, looking more in depth to what you're interested in or something that you could potentially be interested in, I think is really important um, because we're not only all about just being physically healthy, but we want our minds to be as healthy as possible too. I think that learning something new and forcing yourself, even if you're doing puzzles, whatever that is, is important. I play a lot of chess. I like chess. It's not for everyone, but I think it's important that we do something hard on our brain every single day. I've been, I've been trying to learn Spanish every day. I got a Babbel membership for a year and that is so, <laughs> it's so difficult. But it's just part of that development, learning something new. And it could be a skill I'll have down the road. But I, I do think you need to push yourself every day. Build that confidence. And, uh, Judd, we'll, maybe we'll wrap up on this. Um, back to kind of the, 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 the hard times. And, you know, I, everyone, I hope people that actually are having a really difficult struggle, because there are people out there 
Um, and I, I not personally, me, I think I was pretty sheltered growing up of, of seeing bad things and tragedy and understanding that those things do actually happen to people. Um, and I think there is a lot of people like that. And unfortunately there's even more of them that probably do go through horrible things that they're forced to build that mental toughness or discipline, or unfortunately get broken from it. Um, a quote that I read that drastically changed my mindset was, and this kind of set me off on my discipline uh, journey here, call it. Maybe your limiting factor is that you were growing up so supported and comfortable, you never pushed yourself. And if, if that's any of you, anyone listening, if you are seeking comfort, you comfort kings out there. I know plenty of people that seek comfort. Uh, as convenient and as fun as it might be, I do think there's real value to building that resist resistance and adding a little bit of difficult to your life it doesn't have to be something that's going to mentally tear you apart but it can be something like getting to some cold water every morning waking up a little bit earlier when you don't want to pushing yourself a little bit harder each day learning something new like a new language playing chess just getting out there and, and, and expanding your mind trying new things being willing able to being able and willing to fail and, and not looking at those failures as proof that you do suck but there is a lesson learned in all those stuff. So that, that's what we're all about. And I love the, the tips that you gave because I think our, our mission here is we're, we're going to have all these fantastic workout plans. We're going to have supplements going down the line. We're going to have products that are going to level you up to get to that next level. But I think the biggest value that we can give to people is get them off the couch and get them started on their journey because a lot of these people, they're, they, they're not ready for these workout tips or maybe an advanced workout program or even a beginner workout plan. They, they just need to build some momentum within themselves and the confidence and within their brain and work on their own mental health and being able to step outside their comfort zone to, to then level up and keep going from there. So I think that's, that's a real value that people are going to get out of these conversations because you and I have been having these conversations for a long time every single night and trying to sharpen each other and putting the thoughts that we have day to day on the paper and expressing it to each other and trying to unwind and unsolve this puzzle and it's by no means solved but it's getting there and i do think yes we're 24 years old but i do think we have a lot of value we can give to people and i wouldn't say that but i have seen what we have done affect a lot of people and there's been a lot of people that have lost weight that have found a purpose in our community and have taken value from just the little amount of content that we have put out it excites the hell out of me and it gets me out of bed every day it's not gonna stop anytime soon take the step hold yourself accountable just set your goals and be able to attain them but it takes you and only you Get yourself surrounded with the right people and just take that action. We're all about massive action and we believe in you and we support you. So Absolutely. it may happen. And if you need someone to hold you accountable, you don't have anyone, any friends, family, send us a DM, follow all the socials, YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, hop in the discord. That's the best way to get access to us. We have a community of fantastic people inside of that discord that are constantly supporting each other, constantly lifting each other up helping each other in the gym, helping each other with mental health, helping each other with dieting, progress in the gym. There are a lot of great people. I'm looking at 2,300 people in there right now that are all supporting each other. So that's a fantastic community that I'm pretty proud of and super grateful for. I love seeing everyone in there getting active, helping each other. So hop in that Discord you know, if you're not in there. You know what we'll also do is we'll, we'll create a MD community on Facebook as well. That will be done tonight. So... You can hop on Facebook as well. We'll open that up to the public so you can share your story, show your transformations, and just hold each other accountable. That will be done tonight with some massive action. And if you don't have, if you do have a transformation and these things have helped you, please hop on the Discord and hop in this community because I can guarantee you when you started your, your journey, you probably wish you could have seen something like that or had that support. Good on you for getting it done, but give back, help those people out. That's what John and I are doing. John, it's been real, buddy. Till the been next real. one.